So we all know the out of Africa theory. And even though I'm making this video with this particular title, I do still believe that all species from the Homo genus, or otherwise known as all human species, originate in Africa. So yeah, I do still believe in the out of Africa theory. There is zero evidence of any of the Homo species to have evolved outside of Africa when we go back to their origins. Some of you might say Denisovans at this point, but their ancestral species evolved in Africa, just like all others. Therefore, their origins lie in Africa as well. But here's the kicker. What if I told you that there was a species of ape living in the Miocene some nearly 12 million years ago in the area now known as Germany that walked upright? Would you call me crazy? Would you call me a liar? Would you want to debate me? What if I told you there were probably even a dozen species living in Europe in the Miocene, with at least four of them being known as having been bipedal? Well, my name is Kaylee, and in this video I'm going to tell you everything there is to know about Danuvius guggenmosi, a species of ape from Europe that might be the very first to walk upright 12 million years ago. So back in 2015, in a clay pit in Bavaria, in Germany, the first fossils of a late Miocene great ape were discovered. These fossils were dated to 11.62 million years ago. And between 2015 and 2018, excavations took place in the Hammerschmiede clay pit near the town of Pforzen in southern Germany. And a total of 37 fossils were uncovered during this time. So the name of the genus Danuvius comes from the river that flows through this region and the Celtic slash Roman river god Danube, while the species name Guggenmosi was given to the species to honor the amateur archaeologist Sigulf Guggenmosi, who discovered the clay pit in which the fossils were discovered. The fossils were pieced together and they belonged to four individuals. The most complete skeleton belonged to an adult male, which was approximately one meter in height and weighed around 31 kilograms. And yes, for my American viewers, I have the measurements for you as well. That's three feet and four inches tall, weighing around 68 pounds. Also, yes, the calf's back, as always. Hi. So the remains that they discovered belong to a species of ancient great apes, who lived during the late Miocene, approximately 11.6 million years ago. The fossilized partial skeleton of a male ape that lived in southern Germany was bearing a very striking resemblance to the bones of us modern humans. This striking resemblance raises some fundamental questions about our understanding of the evolution of great apes and us humans as well. So we've never known for certain when or where bipedal motion evolved in apes. It's actually been a question since Charles Darwin first argued that great apes were the ancestors of us humans. Up until this discovery, the fossil records of apes showed that the evolution of bipedalism happened around six to seven million years ago in Kenya. Another bombshell I found out during the research of this particular video is that fossils were discovered dating back to 7.2 million years ago in the country of Bulgaria and on the island of Crete as well in the country of Greece. Two European countries, 7.2 million years ago. Let that sink in. Fossilized remains of a species known as Chrysopithecus frybergi were discovered in Greece and Bulgaria. Dating back to, I'll see it again, 7.2 million years ago. Chrysopithecus was without a doubt, not just an ape, but a hominid, a close relative of us, and most likely even an ancestor of our species. I am planning on making a video on Chrysopithecus frybergi after this one. So if you are interested in learning more about this species, then let me know in the comments down below. So these great apes from the Miocene were hominins, 
as they show more similarities to us humans as they do to other great apes. I have to pet. Among the remains were some well-preserved bones that led the scientists to reconstruct how Danuvius bugenmosi would have moved. And while this species was able to hang from tree branches by using its hands and arms, it was able to straighten its legs and walk upright. So the discovery of this species and its bones changes the perception of early human evolution, which used to be believed to have only occurred in Africa. But now there is evidence of hominins walking in Europe before the hominins started doing the same in Africa. The area in which the fossils were found used to be part of a very lush forest climate during the Miocene, which was generally warmer around the globe than it is today. But near the end of the Miocene, the climate started to dry and cool down, which changed the climate in Europe and the lush forest lands were then, well, you know, slowly replaced by less dense woodland and grasslands. So I do personally, personally feel like the hominins from Europe would have made their way further south into Africa eventually at the end of the Miocene as the climate became more dry and started to cool down quite a bit. Their habitat changed quite drastically from warm to cool, gradual global cooling and the growth of an ice sheet while monsoons intensified and forest land was replaced by grasslands. All reasons for hominins to make their way south into Africa where there was still forest land and opportunities for them to evolve and develop. But as I said, that is my personal opinion. It's not a factual claim made by scientists. Tell me, Lila, do you know anything? No. Blank. So back to the science and what it reveals to us. According to David Began, a paleoanthropologist from the University of Toronto, there used to be two main theories about hominins starting to walk upright and how these theories have now been proven to not be correct. So the very first theory was that both apes who walked on their knuckles and humans who walk upright diverged from a common ancestor that moved like a monkey. Preface, moved like a monkey. The second theory is that the knuckle walking of apes was actually seen as an intermediate step between humans and monkeys. Both theories, I believe, are very preposterous. But yeah, that's just me. But the discovery of Danuvius Guggenmosi and the research done by lead author Madeleine Boma of the University of Tübingen shows that neither of these theories is correct. And the reason for this is because Danuvius Guggenmosi had both the long arms that allows apes to walk on their knuckles. You know, like a gorilla walks. We've all seen a gorilla walk, right? But Danuvius also had the specific adaptations needed to be able to walk upright. Danuvius Guggenmosi had some of the specific adaptations that we don't even see in living apes, that we have only seen in other hominins, like the earlier common ancestors of us humans, like the genus of Australopithecus or Ardipithecus or Paranthropus or early Homo species like Homo erectus, Homo habilis, you know, our early common ancestors. So, what do we know about the morphology of Danuvius Guggenmosi. Well, we know that they were very small, with an average weight of an adult male estimated to be between 26 and 37 kilograms, or for my American viewers, that's between 57 to 82 pounds. It's not much. And the average weight of an adult female was estimated to be between 16 to 22 kilograms which for my American viewers again is between 35 to 49 pounds. The molars of Danuvius were wide and there was a broad length between the two cusps. The premolars had three roots instead of two and the canines were oriented more vertically compared to other hominin species which had the canines somewhat sticking. 
When looking at the possible morphology of the body, it seems like Danubius had a broad chest and their diaphragm was located in the lower chest cavity, like us modern humans. They have actually been the very first recorded Miocene grade ape to have this, which is another indication of bipedalism. And I hear you think, why would you say that? Like, what does that have to do with bipedalism? Well, I'll tell you. With the diaphragm located lower in the chest cavity, the lower back should be extended with a greater number of functional lumbar vertebrae, which may have caused lordosis, which you know is the normal curvature of the spine that we see in us humans. This would have actually moved the center of mass over the hips and legs, and that points to bipedal activity. Not paranormal activity, you know, we've all seen movies, but bipedal activity. So the fingers, the wrists, and the elbow bones indicate the Nubius had a very strong grip, with load-bearing adaptations for the arms. And the legs show load-bearing adaptations as well, especially in the knee joints. I'm not going to show you my knee, I'm sitting perfectly fine, but you get the gist. So there is one major difference between us modern humans and Danuvius guggenmosi, and that is the powerful, opposable big toe. Danuvius guggenmosi had a opposable big toe that would have allowed it to grab branches with its foot safely and probably even quite easily allowed it to walk through the treetops. So not necessarily walk on land, but walk in the treetops along the branches. Quite cool. So during my research, I found out that apparently David Beggin has been studying ape fossils from Europe since 1981. And he says that there have been a dozen species of apes living in Europe between 12 to 6 million years ago during the Miocene. These species lived in countries like Spain, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, and Bulgaria, which back then were covered in subtropical forests. He says that these species show the very first adaptations for walking upright and the development of bigger brains and human-like teeth, which were adapted for eating harder foods on the ground instead of just the soft fruits in the trees. He actually believes that Europe was the place where the really important things were happening that eventually formed the basis for what we are today as a species. That our origins go all the way back to between 12 to 6 million years ago in Europe. And like I mentioned, it is widely known and factually proven that in the late Miocene, near the end, the climate cooled globally and eventually led to glaciations and ice sheets covering portions of the globe, changing the climate that used to be warm with, in Europe, subtropical forests. And my personal thoughts on great apes migrating into Africa during this colder period isn't that strange, actually, especially when in the Pleistocene, which came directly after the Miocene, we see all these hominin species emerge and develop in Africa, quite out of the blue, to be honest. Ororen, Tugenensis, and Sahalanthropus, around seven to six million years ago, out of the blue, just poof, we walk up right now in Africa. Which is why I understand it when some people have trouble with the out of Africa theory, because they often ask, where did the first hominin species come from? Well, they were most likely hominins that used to live in Europe that made their way into Africa during a global cooling period. And because of the climate in Africa being much more suitable for them, their evolution sped up. But that's my thoughts on it. You can debate me, you can disagree with me. I do feel like the hominins went out of Europe, south into Africa, and then they developed faster. None of this actually takes away that our ancestral species came from Africa, as we know without a doubt they did. Even our own species of Homo sapiens originate in Africa, Jebel Irut in Morocco. So the out-of-Africa theory does not crumble at all. 
but this discovery might show its origins of the into Africa theory that predates the out of Africa theory. It's not that strange. It might have been an into Africa and then again out of Africa. There has been more than one out of Africa movement. We know this. There's been several. So it might be an into Africa movement first and then the out of Africa movements happened. I have to say, I've never heard of these European great apes or hominins, if you will, that lived during the Miocene before. And I fail to understand how in the past I have not once crossed them. I do know that Professor Per Alberg from the Uppsala University hinted at Chrysopithecus Freiberghi once, at least, during one of our conversations. He never mentioned the species name, he just hinted at a hominin species from Europe. I'm probably going to send him an email and see if he has some additional information for me to use in the video about Chrysopithecus Freiberghi. Because yeah, I would love to fill that video with as much information as possible. But how blown away were you when hearing the information about Banuvius guggenmosi in this video and the fact that it was a bipedal species that lived nearly 12 million years ago? Please let me know in the comments down below and I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions. I enjoy reading them. I enjoy sometimes having a back and forth in the comment section. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner, or click one of the links in the description down below, they go straight to my playlists, or you can click a video in the end card. The end card is always set to best for viewer, and therefore YouTube caters to you and what it is that you'd like to see. I would also like to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting me. It means the world to me. I don't post enough there. I know I've still not completely acclimatized to being back after a month in Egypt. You kind of have a lot of stuff to catch up on when you're away for, you know, a little over a month. <laughs> it's a lot, but I'll try and post more, I'll try and do my best more, yes, I'll try. But with that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.